over the camera in just a second to one Willa Clark, who is my assistant. But what are we doing today? Today we are going to do tin can animal habitat. So you can see what I did here. This is Demi talking, by the way. Usually I'm in front of the camera, but today I'm gonna show you our workshop. First of all, we have a brand new Craftsman work table. Oh my goodness, love it. And it has all these awesome drawers. I don't have as much in it yet. See, look at that brand new drawer with nothing in it. My top drawers definitely do. We've got a whole bunch of bit kits in there that I use for our power drills and drivers all of our deck screws that we use on a lot of our wood projects, our rivet gun down there that we're gonna use on baffles for duck blind builds. But today we are going to use that. So welcome to the workshop. I'm gonna turn this over to her. You wanna hold for me? All right. So take can habitat, super easy. Super easy to do. This is a finished version. This took me all of 10 minutes to do once I had everything together. So what you want to use, your size are, these are regular, I say tin cans, just recycled cans, whatever they're made out of today in 2020 land. We used to call them tin cans. You want to make sure that you have the kind that isn't all, it has a lip at both the top and the bottom versus uh, just at the top for the opening and then it's a fused can at the bottom because you can't open the bottom of that. So um, it is a can that you can literally take your can opener to the top and also to the bottom. So just make sure you're checking on your cans. I've got a bunch of different sizes here. You could use all one size. I like variety and so do the kids that I was working with. They liked different sizes. So you can make it super uniform, you know, just create a basket. I have a basket next to our sink as well as our recycling and we save a whole bunch of different things for different projects but just start collecting them as you're using uh, things for dinner and lunches and meals while you're right now in COVID-19 quarantine. I think a lot of us are going through cans. So I went ahead and spray painted these. I'm not going to spray paint them on camera today. These are my super cool colors. I used Krylon. Uh, these were ones I have extra that I would have in the workshop if I was working with the Builder Girls of our middle schoolers. Uh, I like the paint and primer ones, uh, especially for material like metal, because it just goes on one coat and you really don't need anything extra. Uh, so these are just a different kind. So I've got fluorescent, which typically goes on highways, um, using construction work and landscaping work a lot. Uh, but it's also a very fun color. The girls seem to love it that we work with. Uh, aqua is also a very hot color to them. So I use those three colors today. You can use all one color. You could use fabric paint or uh, craft paint, excuse me, not fabric paint. Rather, I love spray paint. Everybody knows that. So spray paint's easy, goes on fast. Uh, and you just take your, take your label off. Make sure, I didn't do a terrific job of that on the back here, you know, where they glue it on. So, you know, you could, as a parent, don't let the kids have little razor here or any kind of blades, but just take a blade and take that off for the kids. You also want to make sure that all of your, um, any kind of edges are definitely crimped down. You can do that just with a pair of snips or a pair of pliers. Pliers work really well with that. So if I was, I've just got one little spot here. Sorry, while I'm moving. I just got one little spot here that I'm gonna use my pliers and just say, all right, don't wanna hurt anybody here. So we're just gonna push that down. Boom, super easy. So once you have your cans done, I mean, it takes all the time of on two sides and then washing out your cans and making sure they've got no food waste in there or food debris um, leftovers and you're ready to go. So my finished product, I already have our little, little animals, friends in there, but if I was spray painting, I'd be using gloves. These are just regular kitchen gloves right now because latex gloves are being used by medical professionals. We're keeping those for them. And then also a buff. So instead of an N95 mask, I think everyone's using different things. You wanna do something to cover your face when you're spray painting. Especially if you're doing it in like a garage setting, really recommend that you're doing it outdoors. So what I'm gonna do is we already have our glue gun and today I am using my high temperature glue gun just because it's metal. I don't need to. You could be using one of the minis, the craft glue gun, so I don't want you to feel like you have to go here. I get all of my products at Lowe's, who is a partner of ours. Uh, so we're using Craftsman Tools and Aero glue guns right now. These are super high temperature, so if you were to buy something like this, 
Um, this is where I would want a parent doing it and not kids just because uh, this is a high setting. It's used for industrial purposes. So I'm going to use it today, but you can easily use a craft mini for this. And again, I'm just going to put it together. I've already painted. I've already uh, made sure that everything's off, made sure everything's safe so that I don't have any sharp edges. And I'm just going to put these together in, I don't know, a random format today. I'm just going to tackle this. I've got a glue gun right now that wants to go ahead of me. So I've got a I'm going to put the kind of funky spots together here where I haven't done the best job getting those labels off. I'm going to do that first. And you can also, it's up to you if you want to line up to the edge edge um, versus like me, I've just put that one back a little bit. I, I like the fact that it's kind of like an apartment building. Um, you know, this is like a little uptown habitat for the cool cats and kittens for all you Tiger King watchers out there, moms and dads, uh, probably the craziest show I've ever seen. But that was what I was given by our camera woman is the challenge to say cool cats and kittens today. So I'm saying that just for you. And again, I'm just gluing these together. Metal glues together really well, so you don't need a ton of glue here. And I'm just using uh, spray paint here. You could get really crazy with the cheese whiz. I've got my Sharpies out. You know, the kids could decorate these with Sharpies afterwards, put hearts and shapes and names and colors and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Sharpie has just about every color imaginable. I'm a big Sharpie fan too. All right, last couple here. And then I also want to say you could use fabric. Um, if you have extra fabric lying around, you could always cover these in fabric not hard at all. Um, there's so many different things you could do with recycled cans that we're just showing you one way to decorate this and that's simple and with paint, which I love paint. But I like six. Um, you, could, you could make this as big or as small as you want. Really six is kind of a starter kit. I've done an actual pyramid with this one. This one I'm gonna go a little more artsy and not do a pyramid, just do, since I have cans that kind of fit. And again, let the kids play around and what do they wanna do? Um, what, what does your final house look like for, for your animals? And again, this doesn't have to be, and I say again, I haven't told you this yet, this doesn't have to be just for stuffed animals. This could, you could make this easily into, if I had lined these all up, you know, as a base the same, you can turn this like this and make that into pen holders too. So this would be great on a teen desk uh, as a pen holder. So many things you could do to keep this out of a landfill. Um, and also have a cool habitat. So you see I just did kind of a graffiti splatter paint on this So it's three different colors. We could make this all one color come back with a sharpie Like I said, I'm gonna add um, Some other elements to it. See if these stick really quick. I Just have some extra bolts um, We always have bolts and washers and all kinds of stuff hanging around from other projects so uh, easy thing to kind of go out in the garage and or your junk drawer and check out what you've got on hand. Have some fun with that stuff to just put on some nuts and bolts and other little fun finds that uh, could be reused. We love to challenge kids to use things that they don't normally know in their regular environments, um, especially being so connected on the internet and online. Um, this challenges them to be creative with things that they don't necessarily come into contact with every day. We love creativity because at the end of the day, if I can get them in a workshop to do things like this at any age, it usually means they want to try bigger stuff. So that's why I love this as a just kind of beginner project to get those kids working with their hands off the computers for a bit, save the screen time, which can also be just as good in terms of teaching and learning, but gets them out into a workshop or it just gets them using their hands and being super creative, which is how we solve things. So I'm just gonna finish this up really quick. I just got a little artsy with this. And again, this is me doing it in all of a minute. I could be a little more methodical about it in a plan, but I like to wing it on things like this, especially when kids are involved, because usually they will come up with a solution for something and then they're like, nah, I want to change that. I want to do something different. Okay, do it. Let's see what, what the other solution is. I just want to make sure that that gets a little bit of a, that sticks for us. So it doesn't fall off on me. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to get a nice 
grab. Okay, so there we go. Finished product. All I did was add some pink. I spray painted them pink and yellow. Uh, washers and bolts. Well, that was bolts right there. Hex bolts there. I could be adding all kinds of other fun stuff too, but this is so easy to get that imagination playing. Again, I would love to see it too. We're going to do another one, a DIY on a lazy Susan with paper towel rolls for pen holders that are as a pyramid. So another way to keep paper towel and toilet paper holders, which we all know we have extra toilet paper around thanks to COVID-19 because all y'all went and bought toilet paper like crazy people. Uh, we can use those for all kinds of things. We use them for uh, engineering builds, for suspension bridges, for smaller kids, and then we can also use them for pen holders for DIY Lazy Susan. So this could easily be um, attached to one of the Lazy Susan bases, or if you go to Goodwill, another one of our partners we love. They're not open right now during COVID-19, but once they do reopen, that's an easy find at a Goodwill is in the kitchen session section, they have a lot of those things like old Lazy Susans that you can sand down, um, clean it up, spray paint it, and then do things like this on it where you can have, and we'll do that, I think it's next week we're having one um, that's a DIY build with a Lazy Susan with paper towel holders. But you could also do it with cans, which is a little more stable um, and probably longer lasting, but have fun. Can't wait to see what you build. Uh, how many houses you can make for your animals or your tchotchkes or your collections or jewelry, all kinds of stuff. So go out there, be creative. We know you can. United We Spark. Be fearless and kind. Make sure you're doing something kind for a neighbor right now and checking in on people. Otherwise, hopefully you're enjoying the fabulous weather like we have here in the Carolinas today and get out there and create. Take care. We'll see you next time.